How about Washington, D.C.? Now, that'd be a good educational trip for the kids. Dad, this is supposed to be a vacation from school, remember? <laughs> Why don't we go to Shadow Lake? Well, let's go to the moon and the rocket ship. I wonder why Kip hasn't called yet. You don't think anything could have happened, do you? Oh, boy, I sure hope not. What about a safari? Hello? Oh, hi, Kip. Yeah, well, how'd you do? You won? Oh, oh, hi, way to go, huh? Fantastic. Well, tell me all about it. Well, how did you do? You scored two goals? Kip scored two goals. Oh, Kip, I'm so proud of you. Hey, just for that, you can bring a friend along on our camping trip. No, not her. Okay, well, good luck. Goodbye. That's my boy. That's my grandson. That's my cousin. You know what? So he told me that he faked the goalie out. Yeah. When did he come out? I wonder if he did it with his feet or his head. <laughs> I wish I could have seen him. That's it. great. You know, isn't this I wonderful? Know. I'm so proud of him. Oliver. Aren't you excited? I mean, Kip's team just won the first playoff game of the state championship. Big deal. Kip wins a game in the quarterfinals and everybody goes crazy. I get a C plus on my math test and nobody even notices. We're still recovering from the shock, Ollie. And <laughs> hey, you know what? He told me that he faked the goalie out yeah, but all I... by himself. He was coming down the field. He was dribbling this way, dribbling that way. All of a sudden, he goes to kick, faked the guy out. The guy jumped. He kicked it in goal. That was his first one. He said that he drew the goalie off. He came... I'm trying to imagine what it'd be like being an only child. We're all going down to the soda shop for some hot fudge sundaes. Are you coming? Uh, no thanks. I've lost my appetite. Oliver, you must have read my mind. Huh? It's gonna look great right there. What's that? Kip's new soccer trophy. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Good thinking, Oliver. We'll put it downstairs on the mantel. That way everybody can see it. I give up. What's the matter with you? Oh, well, nothing an orphanage wouldn't care. I think he's sort of feeling like a second-class citizen. Second class? Try standby. I've gone through my whole life feeling like Kip's a tuxedo and I'm a pair of brown shoes. Come on, Ollie. You know that I love you both the same. Yeah, well, then why is Kip the one that's always getting rewarded? Because he deserves it. And when you deserve it, I reward you. When was the last time you rewarded me? Well, uh... What about the time you found Uncle Wally's keys under the sofa? Dad, I was two years old. You got an English test tomorrow. You want to be rewarded? Do better than a C plus. Come on, let's go grab a soda. No, thanks. I'm going to stay here and study. What? what? I'll stay here with Oliver, Uncle Beaver. Okay, great. You know, I'm proud of you already. Okay, let's see. How many of these chapters have you read so far? Let me think. None. No? Well, let's see what you picked up in class. Okay, who's Emily Dickinson? Emily Dickinson. Doesn't she sit next to Charlie Kruger in math? <laughs> I'm getting a Sunday. You better start reading. Wait for me! Well, what do you say we cool off with a thick shake at the malt shop after school? Oh, I'd like to, but I have to get ready for the interscholastic debating finals. I didn't know you were on the debate team. Yeah, just joined this year. I really enjoy it. I don't know. 
I get enough for arguing at home with my dad. Are we prepared for this, Oliver? Uh, I think so, Miss Canfield. Good. Maybe you'll double your last test score. Well, it'll be better than that. Otherwise, I'll only end up with a 40. <laughs> ourselves and go to Shadow Lake. Come on, B. We go to Shadow Lake every year. Exactly. And we know right where it is, so we wouldn't need all these road maps. And we know how long it takes us to get there, so we wouldn't have to get up early. Yeah, and we've been there so many times, we can just look at our pictures from our last trip and not go at all. <laughs> hey, that could save us a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, hello, everybody. Why? Did we finally save up enough money to send little Theodore to camp? <laughs> Do you want to go camping with us, Uncle Larry? Don't ever call him Uncle Eddie. That's a splendid idea, you little munchkin. Hey, my kids are planning a vacation, too. Now they can just go along with you guys. <laughs> uh, nah, I don't think that's a good idea, Eddie. Are you kidding? I'll even throw in Kirk. You bring along Mary Ellen, you'll have enough women to cook and clean and fix the tents. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. What you got there? Just my English exam. How'd you do? Pretty good. I guess you better let me see. Don't do it, Squirt. I hate to see your father depressed. Unless, of course, I'm the cause. <laughs> he got a 98. Oh, oh, great. It's a miracle. It's a brand new Oliver. I'll say, the kid must have had a brain transplant. <laughs> I'm really proud of you, son. Why, that's wonderful, Oliver. See, Ollie, we knew you could do it. Perseverance and hard work really do pay off. For tomorrow, I'd like you to read the two poems on pages 48 and 49 by Robert Frost. Who's Robert Frost? <laughs> Not so fast, Oliver. I'd like to discuss your performance on the last test with you. Uh, gee, Miss Canfield, you know, I'd love to, but I got a dead frog waiting for me in biology. I guarantee your frog isn't going anywhere. Sit down, Oliver. You know, I've been keeping my eye on you. You have? Yes. <laughs> In all my years of teaching, I have never seen a student improve as rapidly as you have. As a matter of fact, you were the main topic of discussion at the last teacher's meeting. I was? Yes. You know, I, I've seen a marked improvement in all of your work. I can do worse. <laughs> your progress has been unbelievable. I've been giving a lot of thought as to how to handle this. Miss Canfield, the only reason I... Oliver, I want you to join our debate team. Excuse me? The drive that you've demonstrated is exactly what we need for our lead-off speaker. Lead-off speaker? I knew you'd be pleased. It will be good for you, and it'll be good for the school. Oh, we haven't won a championship in a long time. We are counting on you, Oliver, and I know you won't let us down. the boy genius at work. Another bad omen. A little last minute cramming before the big debate squirt. Just brushing up on a few weak areas. Sort and the meaning of being. You ever debated before? Once I tried talking my dad into letting Karen Cutler sleep over. A worthy topic, but I'm afraid it doesn't even approximate the pressure you're gonna be under. What do you mean? Well, I mean, getting A's on tests is one thing. But standing up there under those hot lights, struggling as a thousand people hang on your every word? 
it's another. I'm gonna be sick. Hey, just relax. That's half the key to extemporaneous speaking. What's extemporaneous mean? I'll keep you in my prayers, kid. By the way, Kip said I could borrow a synthesizer for band practice. How's the old sports hero doing, anyway? Oh, there's an article on him in the newspaper. Yeah? Well, after tomorrow's debate, they'll probably have an article on you, too. You think so? Yeah. In the obituary column. <laughs> Thanks, Evelyn. Hi, Ollie. Guess who I just got off the phone with? Evelyn McKinley. Who's that? She's the girl in my computer class who's good friends with Susan Chant, captain of the Lincoln debating team. Evelyn told me all about her. Figured the info might give you a psychological edge. Good. I can use all the edges I can get. How right, would you find out? Well, Susan's IQ tested at over 200 when she was just three years old. She's in Mensa and got accepted to a special internship at a state for gifted students. Not only that, but... I don't deserve to be on that debate team. Of course you do. You're the most improved student in the school. The only thing that's improved is my printing. What do you mean? You gotta write really small to fit all the test answers here. You cheated? How could you do that? Well, first you gotta get a pen with a really fine point. I mean, why did you do it? I don't know. I needed an A. I wanted my dad to be proud of me the way he's always so proud of Kip. After all the attention I got, I guess it just got out of hand. Boy, Ollie, you really dug yourself a deep one this time. I guess I'm too young to run away and join the army. Besides, I hate canned ham. No, you're gonna go to that debate, and you're gonna be brilliant. You think so? Sure. Yeah, you're right. I'm not as dumb as I look. <laughs> Five bucks says Redhead bites the dust. You're on. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh, Eddie and I just made a little wager. It's not just you, Sam. I've got the whole room covered. You know, some of these dopes actually think your nephew can pull this off. I'll take 20 of that. You got it. And I want to be paid the minute you lose. Dream on, pal. Susan Chan is in Mensa. Oh, great. Maybe she won't be here in time for the debate. <laughs> right. You see what I mean? It's bad genes. It's gonna be the kid's downfall. Ah, Reverend. I'm so happy you're on the team, Oliver. You know, brains are just as important to me as good looks. Well, I guess one out of two is not bad. How are you feeling? What? Oh, sorry, Miss Canfield. I guess I'm just a little nervous. Relax, Oliver. You'll be fine. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our Interscholastic Debating Championship. The three topics for debate have been selected from 20 possible choices and are unknown to our debaters. So, let me present our lead-off speakers, Susan Chan from Lincoln Junior High. And Oliver Cleaver from Grant Avenue Junior High. The topic for our debate tonight, resolved, nuclear power is an effective means of supplementing our energy supply. Piece of cake. Susan will take the affirmative position. Nuclear power is essentially the harnessing of nuclear energy, which is produced as a byproduct of atomic fusion. This energy, which can be harnessed and contained, is a self-sufficient means of electrical power, which is totally independent of natural resources, and is the consequence a potentially never-ending source of power and fuel. What'd she say? What'd she say? <laughs> because of nuclear energy, our water and wood materials, so much a part of our natural environment, and traditionally used for sources of electrical conversion, can be saved for other uses making us less reliant on natural resources and more capable of generating large sources of electricity without the risk of depleting our environment. Thank you. Yeah. 
Thank you, Susan. And now to present the opposing point of view, Oliver Cleaver. Go ahead, Oliver. I don't know anything about nuclear power. Just speak extemporaneously. Oh, there's that word again. <laughs> Nuclear power is bad. Thank you very much. <laughs> For lots of reasons. First of all, there could be an explosion, an extemporaneous one. A nuclear accident could harm our environment. I saw this movie once where there was this nuclear explosion and all these insects got really big. There were grasshoppers 12 feet tall. And let me tell you, when those suckers jumped, it was from one state to another. There were flies swatting people. I mean, it was gross. There was this guy in the movie who had two heads. Now, I don't know about you, but if that's what nuclear power does, who needs it? Besides, who wants to glow in the dark? Thanks, Beeb. <laughs> Glow in the dark. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad. Oliver, you don't have to apologize. You gave it your best shot, and that's all that counts. But I didn't, Dad. Didn't even deserve to be on the debating team in the first place. You see, I cheated on that test. You cheated? Oliver, how could you do that? Well, you take a pen with a really fine point and write it. Oliver. I did it so you'd be proud of me. That's not the way to make me proud of you. Well, I'm proud of your brother, and he never cheated on a test in his life. Oh, I know. Kip's perfect. He's never done anything wrong. I didn't say that. Look, Dad, you didn't have to. Kip's always done everything right. I finally try to do something right for once, and it comes out all wrong. Well, wait a minute, Oliver. Why don't you sit down? You know, maybe some of this is my fault. When I was your age, I used to think that Uncle Wally always did everything right, and I was always messing up. And now I think maybe you feel that way. I guess. Let me tell you about a story I read one time. There was this caveman with a club foot, and because of it, he couldn't hunt, and the other cavemen would laugh at him. And then one night, when they were returning from hunting, they noticed that the cave had all these beautiful drawings on the wall, done by the caveman with the club foot. Are you with me so far? Not really. Well, he was just as talented as they were, only his talents were different. Dad, this has something to do with keeping me, right? Oliver, people are unique because of their differences. I don't want you to be like Kip, and I don't want Kip to be like you. But I do want you to be the very best that you possibly can. And cheaters only cheat themselves. Boy, I guess they really blew it, huh? You bet. But I do give you credit for getting up there and trying. And maybe your extemporaneous speaking will come in handy tomorrow. Why? What happens tomorrow? Well, that's when you get to tell Miss Canfield that you cheated on the test. <laughs> All in the dark. Hello? Oh, hi, Kip. Yeah, how'd you do? Ah, oh, great. <laughs> that's not a victory, that's a massacre. Well, how many goals did you score? 
three. I told you you could do it. I'll bet Kip gets MVP. Wow. A fight? Kicked out? Why? What? You said what? You want to talk to an attorney? <laughs>